Hi everybody, my name is Meta and I'm working in the group fitness department here at Clubber Center. Today we are going to do senior core and stretch. So all you need is a mat, you can wear shoes or you can have bare feet, that is totally up to you. We will start with a short little warm up, more mobilizing, then we'll go straight into the core and then we'll move on to the uh, stretching in the end. So I hope you are right. Grab your mat if you have one and let's start. We're just going to do an easy march on the spots. Try and swing the arms a bit. So we're going to lift the knees, swing the arms to warm up the shoulders. Try and keep your body nice, long and straight. Whatever pace is good for you, that's what you do. So try and use the whole foot. Land on the toes, push down to the heel. Good. Now slowly we're going to bring the arms up, place them next to the forehead, uh, next to the forehead, next to the ears. And then from here we're going to add a little knee and a twist. So a little spinal rotation. Try and keep the elbows nice and wide. And try not to let the knee go in front of you, just keep it in a straight line from the hip. Body one, upper body one to move, twist it. One more each side. Perfect. From here we're going to slowly bring the heel up, so we're going to have a little bit more distance between the legs. Bring the heel up. Again, try not to aim for the opposite. Aim for the same butt cheek. So right heel to right butt cheek, left to left. There we go. We're going to bring the arms out, and I'm going to try and tap. So now we're going to cross over. There we go. Good, you can even add a little tip with the body, warming up the side. Try and keep the opposite arm nice and high. So we're not dropping both arms, just one at a time. Perfect. We do four more. Three, two, and the last one. And we're just gonna stop in the middle. Hip distance apart, hands can be on the thighs, I'm just going to show from the side. So we're going to curve the spine, we're going to bring the arms up, we're going to open an arch. So this one can be slow or fast, any pace that suits you. Really thinking about rounding the body, then arching, opening up the front. And squeeze the glutes a bit as you open up. So here we squeeze the glutes. Last two. And the last one. Perfect. So from here we're going to sit down. Or oh. we're going straight into the core exercises actually. So you will be lying with your elbows under the shoulders. So we turn to the front. Elbows in the line under the shoulders. You can have your tiptoes on the floor, that's fine. Shoulders down, chest high, like you want to lift the chest. You push your knees into the floor, and then from here, squeeze the front, so you lift up the hips. So the target here is to try and keep the back as straight as possible. So imagine you have a tray with your favorite drink, maybe, on the back. So you want to keep that tray as still as possible. It doesn't matter if you're moving arms or legs, keep that tray still. Shoulders low, tuck the tail under just a little bit and squeeze the belly in. So this is a half plank. Just have a little breather, relax down, open the chest a bit. Okay, we're going to go one more time. We're going to slowly add on so you can add on the more levels you want. Or if you want to stay the first level, you stay there. So tiptoes on the floor, push the knees down, squeeze the abs. Lifting up. From here, slowly, we're going to take the hand out and in. Opposite hand reaches. So if you're finding here that you're dropping in your shoulders or dropping in your hips, then you just hold the position, hold the half plank. Or you maybe just lift the elbow. That can also be an option if you're really struggling with stretching the arms out. Let's do the last two. 
Last one. And then we'll breathe up this time. Place the hands in, push back. You can stay high with the hips, or you can go low with the hips. Whatever suits you. Slowly come forward again. So that was the upper body. Now stability around the hips. So lift the chest, lift the hips when you're ready. And then from here, I'm gonna lift one knee, drop. Lift the other knee, drop. So knee up and drop. Knee up and drop. Now if you already feel strong in the plank position and you're used to doing plank exercises, you can do the exact opposite. That means you can start in a full plank and then drop the knee, lift. Drop the knee, lift. So if you feel that you're arching, if you feel that your hips are dropping down, go back to the knee and then lift one leg at a time. Last two. And a little breather. Pushing back, either high or low. Whatever works for you. So again, we have one more option. Coming forwards. So chest high. Make sure again, elbows straight under shoulders. Chest high, lifting up the hips. So from here you can lift the whole leg. Try not to lift it too high. So you can stay on the knees. You go up for two, down for two, and switch. If you're finding that this is a bit slow, you can go double pace. So you go up and down, up and down. Again, our main focus here is to keep the hips as stable as possible. So we don't want the hips to rock. You want to keep that tray with your favorite drink on the back. Let's do the last four. So it's a tiny lift. Remember, you can stay on the knees, you can stay in the full plank, whatever suits you. Last one. And time. Push back. Very nice. So let's give the arms a little rest. Let's work on the back side because our core is not just the front side course also the back. It is the whole corset around your body. So we will lie down on the front. Now from here you can place your hands on top of each other. You can place your chin on the hands or your forehead as long as you feel you're relaxing. A little bit of distance between the legs and like we just did we're going to lift one leg up and down and switch. Again if you find that this is way too slow you can pitch it up so you go up and down, up. Now the target here is to keep the hips pushing down to the floor. So we squeeze the glutes, push the hip down. There we go. And a little trick here, try and see if you can lift your belly slightly when you lift your leg. Yeah, so we squeeze the belly in, relax. There we go. You're probably thinking, what has this got to do with the core? We're coming to that, don't worry. Have a little breather, give the legs a shake. Try and bring your feet all the way together. So squeeze the glute. Imagine that you have something precious between your inner thighs. So we squeeze the inner thighs together. Then we lift both legs up and we drop. So you target again, relaxing the upper body, lifting the belly slightly, that way we work the front side as well as we work the back side. Squeeze the belly and squeeze the glutes as you lift. Really squeeze your feet together, your inner thighs together. Let's do the last two. Last one. Perfect. A little shake with the legs. We're coming back to this one, don't worry. From here. Fingertips to temple. Tuck the chin in so you're looking straight down to the floor. Then we're going to keep the feet on the floor, lift the body and slowly relax down. A nice back extension. So try and 
arm works slow on the way up and slow on the way down. Most of us have a tendency to go fast up and then maybe slow down, but try really work and squeeze your back and your glutes as you lift and then release as you lower. Try and keep those feet on the floor so we're not using the lower part of the back yet. We're exercising the upper part of the back. Now the breath. Exhale when it's tough and inhale when it's a little bit easier. And a little breather. Shake the legs, shake the upper body, whatever feels good. Perfect. So from here, take the arms up to the side, palms are facing the floor. Tuck the chin in again when you're ready. Your feet can be a little bit apart now. Now we're going to lift opposite arm to leg. So if you lift your right arm, you lift your left leg up. You lift the upper body slightly and then you switch. Lifting and dropping. Again, slow move. Keep that chin tucked in. So the neck is long. Squeeze the abs and squeeze the glutes. Try not to hold the breath. Exhale when you're struggling. Inhale when it's a little bit easier. Last two. And the last one. Perfect. Let her breathe out. Hands on the shoulders. Push back. High or low, up to you. Just relax the forehead down. Try not let your arms be heavy in the floor. Perfect. Now we're going to come to all fours. If any of you have problems, being on your knees or your hands, you can do this exercise lying down. I will show both. So basically we're going to do a diagonal lift. So first of all, tuck the belly in so we have a straight back. Again, we have that tray with our drinks on the back. Try not to drop the head. So tuck the chin in, looking a little bit in front of your hands. We're going to start with the legs this time. So you're going to take your right leg, lift it up for two, nice and slow, slide it back. Slide it in and then the left leg. Slide back. Again, you can go fast if you want. But if you go slow, it's a little bit easier to control the exercise. Squeeze the glutes and squeeze your abdominals. Again, I know it's tempting to look down at your feet or your knees, but try and look in front of your hands. This will give you a nice straight back. Try not to lift higher. Then your hip. Last two. Last one. Keep the knees still. If you need to, come up, relax the hands a bit, give them a little shake, a little loosen. Now, the legs are usually easier than the upper body. So when we work the upper body, we're going to try and keep the bicep this side. We show our guns. We're going to try and keep that close to the ear. So rather than pushing the arm out wide, we're going to try and keep it close. So from the front, rather than arm out, we're going to try and keep it close to the ear. So work shoulder mobility. So we're going to reach forward, we're going up, we're going down, we switch. We're still looking just a little bit in front of the hands. We still have that tray on the back. So keep the abdominals tight. Again, if some of you couldn't be on your knees or your arms, you can do this exercise lying down. So you're here and down. Exactly the same move, just lying down. You still squeeze your abdominals before you lift. So we still activate the core. Let's do the last four. Try and keep that arm as straight as possible. 
straight line in the spine. And when you're ready next time, you're going to add the diagonal, the opposite leg to arm. So if you're lifting your right arm, you're lifting your left leg and opposites. If you're struggling with balance, maybe it can be an option just to tap the floor. That's fine. Not a problem. Or if you want to lie down, you do the same diagonal lift. Keep the hip in the floor though. So push the hip into the floor. Make sure the arm goes as high as the leg. Last four. How are we doing? We're good? Yep. Last two. Have we spilled any of our drinks? Or are they still there? Perfect. Now just come up. Grab the hands, loosen up the wrists. There we go, beautiful. Let's turn around. So we lie on the back. So we're going to exercise the back a little bit. So feet come close to the butt. Shoulders stay down. I recommend you take your arms to the side so you open up the front side. Make sure the heels are in line with your sit bones. Now from here, we're going to tuck the tail under. So we're going to lift the tailbone, really squeeze with the glutes, pull the belly button in, and then we're going to roll all the way up to a bridge position. Squeeze in the glutes as much as you can. Try not to let the knees open. Hold them in place. When you go down, try and start from the top. So you roll down from the chest, rolling down vertebrae by vertebrae, rolling all the way down, and releasing. Can we do that a bit faster? So we go up for four, nice and easy. Four, three, two, now big squeeze. We roll down from the top. Really think about your spine from the tailbone to the chest, and then from the chest to the tailbone. Squeezing with the abs and squeezing with the glutes. So the back and the front, plus mobility around the spine. Perfect exercise. We're going to do the last two. If you find it's too fast, just slow down. I prefer you go slower and then really get the exercise with the roll to the spine. So we're going to roll up one more time, we're going to stay on top. Roll up and we're going to stay. So now we're going to focus a bit more on strength. We're going to drop the butt halfway down and push it up. So we go halfway and then squeeze, halfway and squeeze. Now I know it's tempting, the knees will probably start to go out as you squeeze. Keep those knees in, activate the inner thighs as well. Good squeeze. Relax the shoulders, tuck the chin in. There we go. Last two. And then slowly roll down. Beautiful. Very nice. Let's activate one side at a time. So we will quickly find out which leg is the strongest. You can if you want. If you're going to lift your right leg up to the sky, it can be bent or it can be straight. Whatever works for you. The opposite foot can go a little bit to the center if you need to. Good. I'm going to have my knee bent. <clears throat> so if your knee's bent, Imagine you want to push the knee straight up through the ceiling. If you want the leg straight, flex the foot and push your heel up to the sky. So from here we're going up for two, down for two. So basically same move, maybe a little bit smaller, because now we're only working on one leg. So you might feel that the hip want to drop. So you want the hips to be pushing straight up to the ceiling and straight down. There we go. Really activating the opposite hamstring, calf, and glutes. What do you reckon? Can we do fast? If we do eight fast. Smaller move. There we go. Try and keep that knee in. I believe we have the last two. Last one, and time. Other foot down, other leg up, slow, two and two. We go up, two, down, two. So remember your option, 
Pushing your knee high. Or if you want the leg to be straight, not a problem for me. That is your heel you push to the sky. Totally up to you. It also depends how flexible you are in that leg. So last two slow. Push through the heel or the foot in the floor. So make sure you're not lifting the heel. We have the eight fast ones coming up. We have eight, seven, six. Now how much can you squeeze? Really squeeze. Last four, four more. Are your arms relaxed? Three, two, last one, and time. Grab the knees, rock gently, side to side. Maybe take your legs up, give them a nice little shake. Relax your thighs, your hamstrings. Perfect. From here, last little one. Bring the knees back 90 degrees. So this is actually option two. If you feel that your arch, uh, your back is arching here, you simply bring the knees a little bit closer to your chest. This will make it easier. So option one, option two. Arms out to the side. And from here we tap the toe down. So we go down, up, opposite foot. Again, you can slow down if you need to. Your main move is from the hip. Yeah, so really pull the belly in. If you feel that you're lying here, relaxing the belly, you will feel that your back is lifting. So here, it's just gonna be really tough for your lower back and you're really hard on the hips. So, a little squeeze, lower back down, pull the belly button in, so you keep the lower back in light contact with the floor all the time. And then you tap. The closer you tap, the easier it is. So if you want a little bit more, you can start tapping a bit further out. This will really make it hard for your abs. Still tuck the chin in, make sure you're not lifting your head. Tuck it in. Beautiful. Let's do a few more. So you can be close. You can be further out. Let's do the last four. So we have four more. Three to go. Very nice. Last two. One more each side. Last one and time. Either shake the legs or you can lift your hips again. This one can be a little bit hard for the hips. So you can open the hips if you want or you can just straighten the legs out. Give them a nice little shake. Perfect. Now stretch the legs out, stretch the arms overhead. See if you can reach as far as possible. Point the toes. Make yourself as long as possible. Then we're going to reach the whole right side as far as you can. Really reach. And the left side, reach as far as you can. Reach, 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 reach. Tap the toes. And relax. Perfect. So from here, bring the feet in. The soles of the feet are touching and then just let the knees drop out to the side. You should feel a nice opening around the hips and inner thighs. Now place the feet on the floor, hip distance apart, knees pointing up to the sky. Take your right foot, Cross the ankle with the left knee, and then take your right hand, place it on the inner earth, inner side of your knee, and then push the knee out. So again, want to open the hip, and we also want to have a little glute stretch. So this is option one for the glute stretch. Try and keep your lower back slightly down. So you can stay here, or if you want a bit more, you can reach through, grab a hold of the thigh, the knee, whatever feels good. But make sure that you push that knee out at the same time. So maybe use your elbow to push it out. This will increase the glute stretch. 
We use the glutes a lot on the bridge, squeezing up. over, make sure you flex the foot and start with just pushing the knee out. So that can be different between right and left. Maybe this side is a bit more stiff, maybe it's a bit more flexible. Maybe you want to stay here for this one. Maybe you want to reach through and pull down. So whatever works for you for the glute and the hip stretch. Just try and relax your breath. Enjoy that your body can let go of it. Just feel what the stretch works for you. Perfect, slowly release. Very nice. Grab a hold on the back of the knees and slowly roll up. If that doesn't feel comfortable, you can roll onto your side and then push yourself up to sitting. So I'll show the next one from the side. So the legs are coming forward. Most of us will keep having a hard time keeping the back straight in this position. So if you need to, just bend the knees, it's not a problem. But try and sit up as tall as possible. Maybe even pull your hips back a little bit. So knees can be bent, not a problem. If you can straighten your legs, do that. A little trick here can be to place your hands on the back to help you lift the chest. And then you can simply walk small baby steps forward with your hands. Try and avoid pulling with your head. Yeah, so keep chin tucked in. We want to imagine that we want to bring the belly button towards the thighs. So that is our goal. Not the head to the knees, but the belly button to the thighs. That's where we're going. Legs straight, legs bent, whatever works. So you should feel a beautiful stretch on the back side for hamstrings. Slowly coming up, just get the legs a nice little shake. Very good. We're going to turn over. So we're going to be on all fours. So hands on the shoulders, we're just going to look up at the belly button, push the shoulder blades away from each other, so the cat stretch, and then we're going straight down to the cow stretch. From here we're going to lift the tailbone high, then we're going to squeeze the shoulder blades together, so we drop the chest to the floor, you can look to the floor, you can look a little bit forward. So feel the discus in the spine. You can do it fast, slow. I recommend you do it slow as a stretch. So looking up at your belly button, cat and cow stretch. Beautiful stretches for the spine, mobility, stretch for the back, the front, the neck, and between the shoulder blades. Trying to find a neutral position in the middle and then you're going to swing one leg forwards. Just take your time, you can even help the foot if you need to. And then take the other foot a little bit further back, so we can open the hip. Lifting the chest high. Here we're interested in stretching the hips out. If you can't reach the floor, Maybe you have something next to you that you can reach, a chair or a wall, something like that. Just try and relax that hip down, open that chest high. And we're going to switch over. So swing the leg back, opposite foot comes forward. Just make sure that you really open the hips so you have a wide distance between the front and the back leg. The front foot, the knee should be directly over the ankle. 
You can have the hands on the inside, the outside, whatever works for you really. And just let that back in, relax. Try and open that chest. So our hips are really important to keep flexible. They're connected to the lower back. So if you have tight hip flexors, you might have some lower back issues. Perfect. From here, slowly bring the foot back, bring the hands in, tiptoes come under, lift the hips up. You can walk the feet in or the hands closer. And then you just roll nice and gently up through the spine. Don't go too fast. We've just been lying down for a while. So you don't want to get dizzy as we stand up. So as you stand up, oops, just take your right foot. I was about to lose the gear here. Well, there we go. Take the right foot behind the left. Lift up the right arm and then push to the side. I am just going to let this go. Put that on my shoulders. So a little push with the hips, we open up the side of the body. Let's do that to the other side. So swing the leg behind, hand to the hip, left arm up and lean to the right. Let's open up the chest, the last one. It's a little bit of distance between the feet. Just open up in the front, squeeze the shoulder blades. Place the hands together, I'll show it from the side. Push the knuckles down to the floor and then lift the chest high. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give the arms a little shake, give the legs a little shake. Perfect. Senior, core and stretch. Hope you enjoyed it. Ciao for now.